I saw the opening maw of hell, with endless pains and sorrows there, which none but they that feel can tell. Oh, I was plunging to despair. Herman Melville. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to King's Party 1851, Volume 2, Episode 3. So, yeah, that, that's not confusing or anything. Uh, but unlike last time, uh, we are not doing this in in multiple runs, so I don't have to go, this is episode three, but it's actually episode seven, so uh, I'm joined by a cast that is much less confused than me, uh, and it would be my great honor to introduce them. Uh, so we're going to start tonight with uh, Marissa, who is playing Lilith Belvedere, who is our scholar and our believer. Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Marissa. Uh, she, her pronouns, which is also my character's pronouns. Uh, and I am indeed playing Lilith Belvedere. Uh, she's a scholar at Miskatonic University who studies entities that she calls the Fathomless, uh, which are Leviathans of the Sea's Darkest Depths. Uh, she's also a novelist and has written novels about her science, uh, neither of which have been proven much to the chagrin of the scholarly and literary community. Um, and so determined to prove, in that, prove to them that she's not tilting at windmills. Uh, she has booked passage on a whaler uh, and has decided to join this motley crew uh, and go prove it to them once and for all. This is absolutely a reasonable decision to make that will definitely not backfire on you in any way. Uh, not at all. Yeah, no, the story's over now. She, and she sailed on a ship happily ever after. Um, speaking of happily ever after, um, I believe our next character is hoping uh, that the ship will actually be happier than the current situation on land. So let's please welcome Dorian, who's playing Angus Melanson, our strider, who is also our outcast. Uh, yeah, I'm Dorian. I'm playing Angus. We both use he and him pronouns. Uh, Angus uh, is a skilled hunter on land, but feels the need to get off the coast in a hurry due to being unjustly question mark accused of murdering someone um he's about a bit of a fish out of water on the water but he's working hard to learn things and make sure that he's not dead weight on the boat dead weight that's there's there's absolutely no for saying that um let's well, uh, go next to uh justin who is playing uh eamon whistler burns who is both our old sea dog and our kinsman though of course as always justin we have already drifted that yeah so name's justin uh he him pronouns for player and character um eamon originally signed up with the captain who's an old shipmate of his thinking that this was going to be a normal voyage to a normal part of the ocean to hunt normal whales uh, thus far he is finding that this is probably not going to be the case at all and things are only getting stranger and stranger and we haven't even left port yet so should be an interesting little adventure everything's going to be fine i don't know what you're worried about you're just exaggerating just because you've already had strange mystic portents and a mysterious person telling you that you're all doomed it's all smooth sailing once we weigh off i think absolutely everything's going to be just peachy um so speaking of the captain uh why don't we welcome next sarah uh who is playing clement thorne our captain and our lover yes so he's oh sarah she her pronouns playing clement he him um, Clement's been on the sea for most of his life. Uh, I think we said he served in the Navy for a bit with Whistler, and that's how we met. Um, has been whaling before, and this is his first time being a captain. Um, going to a wedding tonight. Uh, killed the last person that I was in love with. That's not going to be awkward, I'm sure. And yeah just waiting to get out to sea he's been sleeping on the ship um pretty much since we got it <laughs> yeah i some had a lovely tea last time yeah oh god and and, and you had some kelp tea in real life right I keep walking into my room and smelling the ocean and going to myself why does it smell like the ocean in here oh that's why <laughs> It's weirdly strong. It's haunting you. Oh, I mean, better, better, better tea haunting you than other things, I suppose. Um, 
So we got a bunch of things to do today so that we can finally get the ship, you know, out of harbor, doing those things that it's supposed to do, like float on the ocean. Um, but we also have uh, a completely ordinary, not at all filled with grim, ominous portents religious ceremony and uh, meeting the rest of the crew. You know, I so, forgot about the religious ceremony. Yeah, never forget about the religious ceremonies. <laughs> the religious ceremonies never forget about you. Um, and yeah, when we left, the captain hadn't yet met the uh, person being suggested to be bosun. I don't know that we need to do that on camera or not. Did you have any objection to them as your bosun there, Cap? Not unless he would prove himself to be an objectionable person and within five minutes. No, not within five minutes. <laughs> then he sounds perfect. Uh, excellent. Um, so yeah, do we want to do uh, a crew thing first or do we want to go straight to the ceremony and we'll do the crew after that? Because I can do either. I even have a move, so... <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I'm going to run the crew thing like it's some of Monster Hearts uh, classroom. So we're going to just generate some names from giving jobs on the ship and that'll be cool. Okay. Well, then I'm inclined um, maybe to do the ceremony because this, this will be fun. Um, so, as I recall, you, Captain Clement Thorne, have been invited to come by uh, Josiah Pembleton himself, your, the owner of your vessel, your employer. Uh, and he told you to bring someone. And so, of course, you thought that, you know, definitely a good idea to bring Eamon because, you know, I don't know. Like, if, if I'm going down, you're going down with me. I don't know how this works in your mind. <laughs> um, and Angus had received an invite from Corey, who probably just wants somebody to back her up in case things go weird, but not like that's going to happen. It's not that kind of ceremony. It's a religious ceremony where you're talking about everything's fine. Be a little least, quiet, little dull, stayed. Yeah, very. I mean, yeah, it's a New England, New England. It's a small New England church that no one else belongs to. How bad could it be? It'll probably just be a bunch of hymns. Two hours later, you all stumble home. Maybe have coffee in the basement or something. That leaves Lilith. Oh, I don't Clement, have to ask. Clement definitely intends to invite her. Oh, okay. Over, well, over Amen, even. Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to even say is like there was no question about will Lilith come. <laughs> the only question is how will Lilith come. The phrase is it is would you like to come to a wedding? And of course, she loves the idea of the anthropology of observing the wedding. Uh, and so she will agree, not even knowing what she's getting into. But she will, of course, be delighted to actually find out what she has gotten into, as opposed to <laughs> the reverse. How, how as opposed to just a regular wedding. All right, then. So uh, the Jedi Temple sits on Temple Hill, oddly enough. Um, it's been here a long time in various forms or another. And uh, this this is the hill that is closest to the water in, in in uh, Kingsport. It's not near the wharf, though. That's like where the common is. It's a little bit to the south of town uh, and plunges steeply down into the churning surf beneath low. Uh, in its form, it looks like a rather plain New England type structure uh, with a uh, half stone foundation and then wood. Inside, it would pass fairly easily for some sort of Puritan meeting hall down to the uh, Pure meeting halls very often didn't have pews that stretched across the entire space. They had boxed pews uh, where families would all sit inside their own little box. So it, it's much like that. There is a, well, it looks like a cross, I guess. It's more like it's it's one of those crosses that branches off into crosses and then has little crosses branching off of those inside a big circle. So it's almost kind of, it's more like a mandala than it is a, a pure cross, but you know, you know, it's like, you know, the Maltese have their own cross. This is not that strange. Um, there is a rather oversized baptismal font and um, other things that are not immediately obvious. 
And as people filter in for the services, which are held exactly at sundown, um, they look like rather staid and ordinary King's Porters wearing their best, even though it's like a Wednesday evening. So that's a little weird, but not that weird. I mean, the Puritans used to have services on Wednesdays. So, And uh, the minister is a man named uh, Perdition Williams. Uh, who has an ageless face cut out of New England granite and gives a service that is odd. Um, so why don't we just get figure out how that's odd? Um, so let's go with um, esoteric gloomy or absurdly out of place as your categories. And I would like each of you to maybe brainstorm a detail that fits one of those three categories. Recall to me what time of year we are. As near as I can figure this feels like it should be um, fall. Is that when the, the whalers set out? They could set out at any time of year. Okay. I wasn't sure if it was the sort of thing that had some seasonal orientation or not. There there was, but um it's way in, it's way into the small tax, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Okay, I think I have one. So as the service is going on, there's a lot of mentions of the deep but not just specifically of that word or just like the unfathomable depths or something like that. The person conducting the service uh, talks about like the things within the sea floor or the topography and what is there with um, the kind of recollection of like somebody talking about walking around in their own backyard like it's a little too real and it really kind of puts you there in the scene, so to speak. And it just feels like, I mean, we are, we are used to hearing, you know, pastors or preachers talking about walking the fields and then having to climb the rocks and then cutting your knee as you try to ascend. But this is like, how does this guy know so much about what's down there? No one knows about what's down there, right? And I think the hymns are very slow down sea shanty tunes with the words changed. They're like in that very ominous way that children's songs sometimes have. You mm. know, Ring Around the Rosie. It sounds fine unless you listen too close. And uh, as for esoteric, I think there's definitely a part of the service where there's like a call and response between the officiant and like the congregation uh, that has to do with the, a very academic uh, anatomy of whales. So like reading, effectively like reading off a list of like the different organs and counterparts in a whale, like a, a list that like a whaler has brought back that you know documents every little piece of the whale's body and like the officiant says something like you know we are we pledge ourselves to the whale's heart and the whale's brain and like goes through this whole list and the congregation at each point responds with like this very monotone uh but in unison like affirmation of committing themselves to the whale uh, I think this is less about the service and more about the space, but I think they have um, leaded glass windows, not a, not like representative uh, stained glass, but the sort of more abstract kind. Uh, I think it's uh, sometimes with old leaded glass, there'll be some like clouding or like little bubbles, imperfections caught in it. And I think there's quite a lot of that. Um, it looks a bit like sea glass and uh, the colors are all these like murky blues and greens. So it occludes quite a lot of light coming into this space rather than uh you know letting in natural light from the outside so much bravo i like all those okay so the service gets to the point where normally you would expect in a christian service that it would kind of end soon but at that point the reverend thunders down from his pulpit 
There are members of the Calypso here. Step forward, Calypsos. Uh, I'm going to sort of like cast a sidelong glance at the captain to see if he knew about or anticipated this, I guess. Same. He gives no sign of it, but after a long pause, does step forward. I think Lilith did not look at the captain. She just stepped forward on command. <laughs> uh, I follow the captain. Yeah, I'll sort of, you know, when the captain steps forward, I'll, there will be a beat, and then I'll sort of, like, reluctantly unfold myself and join the rest of them. At the special I think it's it's more about not wanting to be singled out than, like, an active wariness of this particular situation, I think. At the special prayer of our most gracious brother, Josiah Pembleton, we are invited to come to the Fount Profound. And there's like a little stirring in the crowd, but um, you're led around behind the altar. And there's in what would be kind of like the, um, what is, it's not the nave, it's the, it's the chorus behind the uh, altar in a cathedral. But there's a sort of rounded space and there's just a well. <laughs> but there's no lip, there's no rim. It's just a hole cut into the stone. And at the bottom, you can hear the pounding of the waves. This is all new to me. I'm sorry, so, what makes this well profound? It's depth, young miss, says the reverend. And he reaches in with like a silver, it looks just like a ladle, doesn't even look like an asperger. And he just splatters some water on each of you. Uh, I think Angus will take a step backward um, when the attempt to splash him with the water uh, happens. Uh, he is inclined to politely decline. Uh, he, I think he prefers not to participate in um, anyone's uh, religious rituals particularly and will articulate that if pressed. Any reactions, Crest, Captain and crew? Um, I respectfully take the, the splash, not really knowing much about what's going on. Like, Eamon's only really ever been into Catholic services, so in his mind, he's just like, is this what Lutherans do? Are these Lutherans? I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll take the water and, like, not give Angus, like, any kind of look. Like, it doesn't matter whether or not you do it. The sea will come to claim you one day regardless. Not, not saying that, though. I think Lilith uh, is surprised by the splash. Like, she was waiting for the answer or more information about what makes this well so profound, uh, and then suddenly finds water in her face, and that's, I think, what happens to Lilith. And they might wish to know somewhat of what is to come. I invite you to gaze into the well. To open your eyes to the font profound and see what mysteries it unfolds. And again, Angus will uh, decline politely, but uh, definitively. Just a, a demurral. Probably step forward at the same time as love. <laughs> Which is immediately. <laughs> and can we tell how far down the water is? Not, and you look down, it, look, it goes down at least to the water line, but you don't know how much deeper it goes below that. Oh, yeah, totally. But like, where's the water table here? Well, you know, the water table is going to, yeah, no, not even that much. Um, but yeah, it's it's good 40, 50 feet maybe down to the water because you're on, we are after the all on a hill. Yeah. So uh, it, it's quite deep, but the well gives the impression of possibly being deeper still. Like it's one of those very deep holes that you get off the coast sometimes. Uh, if you gaze into the font profound, um, you may uh, you may look beyond it and uh, take plus one on any answers you receive. I have an out of character question. Hmm? I already have a plus one going forward for this session. 
Ah, yeah. Well, then you would be on this roll. Okay. Um, wow. Eamon's I'm not just... saying that you get the roll plus one. I'm saying any answers you get, you'll get plus one if you act on them, that information. Okay. Um... And that's plus one ongoing, by the way. Gotcha. Not plus one forward. You have plus one forward. So the next roll you make, you get you'll you'll burn yeah. you forward. But uh, plus one ongoing lasts until it doesn't obtain anymore. It's very mechanically tempting. It is. That was my plan. <laughs> I um, I think Eamon will saddle up to it, mostly because he just. He doesn't want to be rude, you know? He's never been to this kind of church. Maybe this is just the thing. <laughs> He's just like, when do they give me the host and the wine? That's that's when I usually know we're almost <laughs> done. But I look. I look. What are you looking... What would you... So as you look and you stare, and it's one of those things where at first you can't see the water because it's so dark, but then you catch that glitter and it's like your mind has that little trick of perspective where finally you were able to get a look at it. When that happens, you hear just, it's almost as if you hear a voice in your ear going, ask. What would you like to ask? I'll let the captain go first. <laughs> Be respectful. <laughs> it's you were the one who was asked, Damon. It's true. Um, Unless you're you're stumped for ideas. Oh no 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 no! He, he's because um, we probably all come up so simultaneously, and then just this is. I um, I, I cough once or twice, and um, look kind of down at the water. Try to say it quietly. Is um, is the crew in danger from anything strange? I, I invite you to roll, uh, play uh, to uh, see beyond. Okay. Uh, let me grab the roller real quick. Oh, I've got a roller up, so. With my beyond, plus the plus one that mm -hmm. I have, it's at eleven. Oh, an eleven. That's uh, that's that's very good. Uh, when you sense beyond on a ten, on a ten, you receive visions and truths. Amen burns. Thou art to the sea born. Beware not thy captain, but thy captain's desires. Beware the secrets kept from the sea. Thank you. Nomre patre fieri spiritus sancti. He takes a step back. Next. Angus is just watching the rest of you. He's not like, he's not like lounging or doing anything disrespectful. He's, you know, just like standing there, probably got his hands loosely, like loosely clasped in front of him, just uh, on his, on his best behavior, but he ain't moving. I'll step up next then, or step up a little closer. And look. And that's plus beyond. Oh, um, 13. Speak your desire. And in my head, I say you. To find me, you must risk the uttermost loss. Haven't I already? Not yet. What is more than my life and his life and everything? But with that, the sea is silent to you again. <laughs> Thank you.
You feel like? Do you feel satisfied, or do you need anything more? I don't know if I'm talking to my God. Ah, uh, well, yes. There were no promises made. <laughs> there were not. The sea is as I... silent as the city streets are not. Sorry about that. Yes, I have the window open. It was quite warm today. Clement would come away from that as confused and undecided as he was coming in. Angus will shoot a sort of inquisitive look if uh, if that confusion is reflected on Clement's face or like posture at all. I think he looks disappointed. Yeah, he's he's watching pretty closely and like looking at people's reactions as they look into whatever this is, for sure. I think Lilith knows very little about organized religion and how these things are supposed to go. Um, Lilith carries her book with her at most times. Um, and in her book, she has notes, observations, occasional drafts of short stories here and there. And of course the novel she's begun. Um, I think Lilith rips out a short story from her book, walks up to the well, does not look into it, but drops the short story in and says an offering and a promise. Do you wish to look beyond or? or is... I think, can she, can she sense what's beyond without hey. looking in the well? Like study hey. the well as if like look at it as opposed to look in it. You did make an offering. So sure, but um, tell me what you have in mind as you as you don't look into the well. I think she wants to know, or I suppose she believes she has a theory, a hypothesis that this is connected to the fathomless somehow and i think what she seeks or the offering she makes is predicated upon that hypothesis so by looking at the well she's testing it she's trying to figure out if what is speaking or or the entity the beyond that is here is connected to her fathomless that she studied i, I should roll amazing will do Okay, so that's plus two beyond. Ooh. That is also 13. You're all good at this. Yeah, yeah I think you're the only non beyondy person in the group. I am. Yeah. Everybody else is a seeker upon the seas of knowledge, except Tangas. Just like, I don't want this. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm hot and buff, which none of the rest of you are, so. Definitely advantages there. Um, Lilith, you have an image of a gigantic coral reef teeming with life. Strange creatures that you've never seen before bustling around, some with what looks almost like intelligent purpose, almost as if this is not some reef, but some great fantastical city beneath the waves. And the waves speak to you and say, so much as this reef is hidden beneath the waves, so much of we is hidden there too. Wilt thou come to us? And I think a, a half smile quirks up Lilith's face and she says, I intend to. It is a pleasure to meet you. So at this point, the crowd almost looks like they're ready to start dispersing, but the Reverend holds up one hand and says, Brother Josias, art thou sworn to do what you have asked? And Josias nods and says, my honor and my life. So the Reverend turns to you, Cap. <laughs> we do not often offer this to them that are not salt, to them that are not of our congregation. But Brother Josias has asked that you be offered the chance to undergo the embrace, if thou wilt. 
And Coma is like still like, you know, toes off the edge, looking down into the well and like, like it's a, an effort to look back up to somebody's face. And then I'll step off into it. Into the well? Yep. Hopefully this is what he meant. <laughs> it is indeed what he meant. Great. Oh boy. Um, oh. I'd like you to, uh, I would like you to roll, um, to, uh, act under pressure because yeah. Is, is this a plus one thing or plus one forward? Um, no, it's just your balance. Okay. <laughs> 12. You fall for a long, long time. Longer than you think you could and and still get back to the surface with the air remaining in your lungs. All the way to the bottom. And it's dark. So profoundly dark and cold and quiet. And then there's a faint glimmer. And almost as if the water becomes jellied around you and you can almost breathe. And buried in the sand are three objects. There is a coin. There is a star. And there is a twisted nautilus shell. You have time to grab one. Which one would you like to grab? The shell. Very good. I'm going to uh, just paste something in the chat. Uh, you may recognize where I can't the idea to uh, come up with this, but um, so congratulations. <laughs> um, you are now in communication no. with one of the deep powers of the earth. That's great. <laughs> I will copy that down to my mouth. Yeah. So. Uh, I'm just going to take one hold right now. <laughs> What is a string in this context? Oh, I'm sorry. It should say hold. It's the oh. same thing. Yeah, yeah. I stole from Monster Heart. Still, don't at me. Um, the next thing you know, you're being, you're on the stone flags with Eamon staring down at you quite worriedly as a couple of uh, the younger kids are, are basically doing mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth rescue breathing on you. Yeah, like rolling to my side and like, you know, just bleh. Um, so for everyone else, what you saw is the captain jumped. Nobody in the congregation moved. I imagine at least Eamon and maybe Angus did. Yeah, Angus went for it. And I thought about even asking to roll to try and catch Clem, but I thought it was more interesting if uh, if he just uh, did took, you a, jump in took a dip. Did you jump in after? No. Okay. I think I, Lilith thought about it, but I, I think maybe did not. Felt like Lilith's too lawful. She would have to be invited. I, I just figured Eamon watched the captain kind of like tip forward with like a thoughtful expression on his face. And then when he actually went into the well, he just had a complete moment of stunned silence. Like, is this supposed to happen? Yeah, Why Angus probably like yet. <laughs> Angus Angus probably did dart forward, but when he missed his attempt to you know like catch Clem's coat or whatever, he wouldn't have jumped into an extremely deep hole because um, at that point either uh, Clement was going to be okay because of some mystic nonsense, or they would both be fucked. Um, and like it it did not seem that jumping down would really have uh, made things better. So. So uh, eventually, uh, after like a minute, when you know everybody would be like, the, the cat's going to drown, a couple of kids jumped in with ropes trailing and went down and pulled him back up. They were down for a long time too, but then they came back out and seemed just fine for it. So yeah, everything's fine. Nothing strange here is happening at all. Nope. Um, Which is not what common things happened. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, like after I've, you know, all the water's gone, um, just kind of push myself up and say to, to Amen, I think, 
Oh, and then look at Lilith. Um, just what is sacrifice can never be lost. What is given freely can never be taken away. I um, I don't say anything to the captain. I saddle up next to Lilith. Um, I know I tease you a bit, but you're much more knowledgeable in the ways of the world than I am. What denomination is this? I've only really gone, gone to Catholic masses. Um, typically, the baptisms happen in a shallower basin. What, oh, what's going I, on? I know very little about religion. It seems oh. to be... I don't know, actually. It seems that these people have discovered something interesting. I wonder if the university knows about this. Oh, After all, if they do, that might open a, a place for my research to have proof, you know, uh, to have some sort of active... Oh, how fascinating. You talked about Miskatonic. Oh, yes, of course. Right, right. Don't strange things happen at Miskatonic? Depends on your definition of strange, I suppose. Oh, I don't know, like the captain of a ship jumping in a well, not showing back up for a couple of minutes is kind of strange. Um, well, that was the captain's choice, I'm sure. Uh, aye, aye, it's, um, fair. Um, There's a whole division, you know, about luck, probability, and the outcomes of one's decision making. Freedom, fate, free will, that sort of thing. I really. Hmm. You people study luck. Of course. Oh. It's a very powerful force. I mean, you know, I'm a whaling man myself. I mean, of course, I believe in luck, but I didn't know them scientists were up there studying it. What, what, um. I I just got off a boat. Uh, maybe five years ago, uh, five five days ago. Um, when did the world get weird? Because when I left, uh, I mean, it was just uh, fish, and uh, people had pet dogs, and um, it was it was all very normal, and I understood what's going on. And now I'm very confused. People still have pet dogs, I believe. I have never had one. Oh, okay. Um, I think I've had enough um religion and culture uh for for one night um i'm not jumping in the well if they ask me to i've already talked to the spooky voice in the well and i um i, I don't feel right afterwards the two prophecies in two days is more than enough for this old dog oh i wouldn't worry about it i don't think they're going to ask you to jump in the well you have to be invited to jump in the well oh good no one's invited me and i'm not going to be rude uh now if you'll excuse me um I'm going to go somewhere else. Lilith waves cheerfully. Uh, Angus, you seem to have your head on tight. Um, you know, care to care to leave not with like, me? Not like a yeah nod, but like a, a nod of acknowledgement. Um, uh, I was hoping to have a word with the captain as we headed out, but I'm definitely. Uh, I could use some fresh air, certainly. I, I'm going to go um, smoke my pipe. <laughs> Just goes out. He leaves. Yeah, he'll he'll exit the building with you. Uh, he'll probably like hang around near the door. Um, so if you if you are like fully booking it, uh, he might not follow you. But I'm uh, I'm making a beeline, but I'm not being disrespectfully fast. Mm -hmm. It's not proper to run a church. Okay, so uh, I would prefer to see PC PC before I do any more NPC stuff. So oh, yeah, yeah, like Clement, I don't. You we, want don't, to we, talk don't need to, we don't need to have that on screen. I'm just like excuses for Clement right. not to follow right away. Um, but I, I'm eager to see Angus and the cap. So yeah, so when you when you get outside, he is probably just like leaning against the. I imagine the stairs have some kind of know railing or similar so he's probably just like leaning against the uh the edge of the stairs there 
Yeah, uh, come out fairly slowly. Is Lilith hanging behind, or? Mm. I think Lilith will probably uh, probably be the last to exit, uh, in part because she has to be dissuaded from studying the well further. <sighs> um, people are like, we're closing down now. And she's like, no, I'm still studying. So nice to see you have an interest, but uh, we were all hoping to get home. <laughs> really closing time uh but yeah Clement will come down um I probably like like I'm carrying my my shoes or whatever because they were full of water and gross now oh god <sighs> but yeah see you and like do not slow down or anything but see the uh intent and just kind of tilt my head yeah he'll sort of uh he'll like as as you pass him if you're not slowing down he'll you know like just get up from where he's leaning and fall into step kind of beside you. Um, interesting evening, Captain Thorne. It was, I thought. I should ask, uh, is this by, by way of being some kind of religious voyage? Is there a missionary element here that I'm unaware of, or? It's a whaling voyage. That's what the ship was chartered for. And all of it remains this that. is not related? What's your question? The ship's Goal Only what hasn't I asked. changed. I just wanted to be sure. Um, what I believe or what they believe doesn't change that. He, you, he nods and he's like, that's all well then. You didn't look. I did not. Um, I have my own beliefs. They are... Uh, I keep them to myself. They do not align with uh, any of the churches in town that I know of. And I feel it disrespectful to uh, play act at other people's um, faith. And he'll reach out and like put a hand on your shoulder and probably stop walking even and like turn to and turn you to face him and say, as though it is a comfort, the sea takes everyone, even you. I'll reflect on that. Very dry. <laughs> and he smiles as though you've made a joke. In any case, I just wanted to make sure um, I wasn't walking into something more complicated than I was expecting. We'll see, won't we? I we'll suppose his, we will. Let his hand drop and nod and walk off into the dark. And at that point, like, Angus will probably let you get ahead of him. He probably, like, slows his pace a bit as he uh, ruminates on on that exchange odd odd night for for this lab ain't it though yeah <laughs> um cool so i know that we have a, a request for a scene with will from the captain um my thinking is that in a few days the ship is going to set out so we can start looking at crew, including the assigning of the lays. Um, as for you, Captain, uh, Josias Pemberton meets with you on the ship. This is, this is thy first mastering, and yet thou underwent the embrace. I offer you the one-tenth lay, Captain. Uh, what would it normally be? Between eight and 16. No, oh, so that's quite a bit more, potentially. Uh, but yeah, 
No, it is without like, you know, any great celebration or anything, but just like, all right. It's not my first time on the ocean. So the rest, I leave it to your judgment. Just do not give the ship away and I shall sign the papers over. Thank you. So what are you going to go offer Eamon? Whatever is appropriate, uh, you tell there's me. A little, there's a little chart on the side of the uh, crew that tells you the approximate range. I will give him the approximate range. The 20th lay? Sure. So that's 1 20th of the net profits, in case you were wondering. Yeah, and give give everyone, you know, what, whatever's appropriate without overselling it too much that I run out of money at the end when I'm apportioning it out. Or, you know, potential money. All right. Uh, question, though, what job does Lilith lobby for? Or does she just say, hey, I'm here? Uh, we haven't we haven't done that yet. Hang on. Well, we're going to get to that. Let me just do out some stuff. Yeah, so, Angus will probably lobby for a little higher. So Corey, I think, waits until Angus is on deck working and comes into you. It comes down to the cabin to negotiate her pass lay and says, well, Captain, you and I both know that I would qualify for mate on this vessel, but I've accepted to be boat steerer. You have? As such, I think I deserve the 75th lay. This would be the top range, but not, not completely out of whack. We'll see how you do. Well, will you give me that lay or no? I would like to read another thought. Oh, sure. Go right ahead. My luck continues to not run out. That is a 10 on the dice. Plus brain, which is zero. So it's a 10. Uh, you may ask uh, any of the questions. Uh, you may ask up to three of them uh, during hmm. the course of the interaction. Do you need it? And what I'm asking here is what does she need most, which I assume is not money. She crosses her arms. Tis respect I wish, Captain. It's my father has now given all his continents to his sons and none to his daughters anymore. That has not been our way of the past, but father is changing things. Respect is something you should never have to ask for or demand. I am in the position where I have no good options within that regard. I'll accept whatever lay you wish to give me as I wish to make this voyage, but I would then have a request. And she glances at the glances up towards the deck and says, Great Angus Mallinson Abel. He'll either be an able seaman by the time we reach the Azores or I'll push him overboard myself. <laughs> By all rights, he deserves to be rated green, but he has the makings of a fine sailor in him. What does she intend to do? To be honest, she's incredibly ambitious. You can tell that right away. Yeah. And you know that she's been working with Angus to, to learn how to throw the harpoon. She may well be hoping that, you know, not, not wanting to do any harm, but like if some accident should befall one of the mates which can happen it's an incredibly dangerous occupation 
that you will rate her as one of the mates, and then Angus can replace her as a boat steer, and to the happy profit of them both. Hmm. I feel like she kind of already asked or answered what she wishes I would do. Hmm. I misspoke. It should be ordinary, not able, but hmm. the principle applies. Okay, so that's just one level up. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah not jumping me all the way up there. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Has she lied to me about anything? Uh, definitely not by commission. She otherwise keeps her her uh, hands very close to her vest, much like you do. But in that, you can also sense that she will hold any secret she is asked to hold. Hmm. As the sea does. Um, yeah, I... Let's see. Mr. Monson is an ordinary seaman, then. Very good, Captain. Thank you, Captain. And just kind of like that, that tone. Oh, yeah, sorry. In light, did you say something? I oh, no, no, wrong. just like oh. that. That was an interesting mm -hmm. tone. <laughs> was there anything else? No, she she happily goes aboard. We shall see. In keeping with your spirit, I have rated all the other harpooners at the exact same way. <laughs> Not at the 75th, at the 90th, but they're all. Mm -hmm. Now, you'll at some point, you'll want to decide um, who gets, who was, I've left them just in that order, but uh, that is not necessarily the order they will be. One of the things that you will do is the mates will get to choose their boat steers and uh, and assemble their boat crews. Mm. So as captain, you will have the first choice of boat Oh yeah, steer. well, sticking with Corey because I would like to keep an eye on her. Sure. <laughs> uh, Eamon, do you have a thought on who you'd like to be your harpooner? Mm. I'm torn between either Benoit or Thorn. I think I'll take Thorn because I feel Thor? like, yeah, I think I'll take Thor because Benoit, good, but he's a little too cocky for Amos there. <laughs> I think I'll just leave that the same way. So we'll give. Uh... Elias gets Benoit and uh, or rather uh, Lawrence gets Benoit and uh, Elias gets Oscar. All right. Now I've put on uh, a suggestion for the cook and the surgeon. Um, I don't know if everybody wants to do that, but uh, that is what I have there. If people want that, that's fine. They're a married couple. They're very jolly. <laughs> Are well, they so the that's... cook and the surgeon? Or oh, the sorry, the cook and the carpenter. It's cook and the carpenter, my bad. Mm. As for the rest, uh, so yeah, we do have a question about um, what are we going to rate Lilith? Well, she is probably an idler, yes, I imagine. Uh, I actually thought of, I don't know where i think in some ships like this got rolled into the surgeon's job but like isn't there also like a clerk that like keeps the log up to date and stuff some ships carried a purser um not all that whalers feels... did because whalers didn't generally make that many port calls but yes if she's going to be on the ship and need something the steward's job is basically to wait on the captain <laughs> awkward yes <laughs> Uh, to <laughs> take care of their clothes and shoes, to serve them their meals. Is that um, not what the cabin boy is for? No. Well, yeah, the cabin boy could handle a lot of the boot blacking and other sort of things. There are different the, kinds of cabin boys, you know, the ones that are there to train for sea and the ones that are just there to be servants. So thinking about it, I feel like, the. I mean, with her skill set as a writer slash scholar, I feel like 
Clark slash Purser kind of makes sense if our whaler had that. Another option could be Sailmaker, although I think Lilith wouldn't have, she would have sewing skills naturally as like a yeah. high foreign woman. Um, but like someone would have to tell her what. Yeah, Sailmaker is a pretty high skilled position. You have to, yeah, actually. she'd be like more like an apprentice, being okay. like, I can sew basic things. Do you want to carry a Purser? Uh, I have sure. suggestions. Yeah. So now. Um, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. Lilith said that she wants to come on our big shiny boat to hunt whales. So she wants to get the experience of being a sailor and, you know, doing all that whale work and so on and so forth. So would it make sense to have her like jotting down stuff in journals and keeping notes for us and stuff? I think we should put her to work. If at, at cabin boy, I think it's a good start. Um, just getting the experience of life at sea, doing the work, tying the knots. You can rate her green, and holes. and she'll be expected to stand a watch. As green, she won't be expected to steer because my God. <laughs> I found something oh, interesting. The, boat. the uh the the requirements for being an able seaman were that you could reef splice and steer. That meant that you could climb into the rigging and reef up the sails to draw them in or let them out. You could splice ropes together, which was something you had to do a lot because you know you always have bits of rope lying around, and you could steer the ship, which wasn't as hard as it sounds, but wasn't you know like super easy you had to be able to read the you had to be able to read the compass and and know how to hold the ship in the against the wind what, so. what appeals to you most yeah. <laughs> um great thought i like actually my because i like that direction in terms of challenging lilith i wonder if we can split it down the middle like you're willing to take her on as a purser and she will like do all the log keeping journal stuff like as her you know official role on the right like ship but she still has to do something when she's not like she can't just sit writing novels in the bay so like at times that she's not doing her main job you make Eamon kind of her boss and then she has to be like Eamon's intern effectively which <laughs> yeah that feels fun to me because then you can kind of play with her skills, but also like putting her in situations that she has no idea what to do in. Yeah, you could actually go out onto the ocean to, you know, look at stuff. Stab it, stab the whale. <laughs> no. Sounds good to me. Right, so let's write her as clerk. And uh, green. <laughs> I give her a weird lay, like the 212th lay or something. <laughs> the 313th. I mean, I feel like Lilith is definitely not here for the money, but equally, I feel like she is proud that she's making her own money at something, too. Even if a small amount. 212th it is. <laughs> In uh, Moby Dick, they offer uh, Ishmael the 777th lay. <laughs> He's not happy with that. Um, so that leaves, uh, that leaves Angus. I think they will rate the 190th lay. Someone who's pretty green, but ordinary enough. Yeah. I mean, I guess if, uh, if Clement, uh, agrees to make me an ordinary, it would still be up to him where within that range he'd be. I mean, probably on the low side, but, you know, we'll see. I don't know. Do we have any numbers left over at the end, or is it... Oh, yeah, this, this is all percentages. So, mm. uh, you know, it's the net profit, which on a ship like this would be somewhere around twenty-seven to $30,000. Uh, In 1850. dollars <laughs> yeah. It, it, it was, like, at least a half a million dollars, probably closer to a million, all things being told with purchasing power. And of course, there was some talk about uh, bringing on Phoebe, but I'll leave that to Lilith to make a uh, pitch on that regard, whether she is brought on board on Surgeon or is 
as Castaway, as a uh, as uh, Stowaway, yeah, <laughs> Stowaway, then <Dead>. Castaway. <laughs> yeah. Um. All righty. So let's see. I actually opened this thing up, and maybe I can repurpose some of these questions. Okay. So, um, Captain, out of all these crewmen that come tumbling aboard. Who's the absolute greenest landsman you've ever seen walk upon the deck of a ship? Besides, Can I not say Angus or Lilith. <laughs> yeah, besides besides the player characters, I mean, there's like <laughs> there's like someone that makes Lilith who at least is like take, drawn pictures of knots look like an old salt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lilith at least has like some existing interest and academic knowledge of the sea. Yeah, she is a natural scientist, all things considered. And maybe a supernatural scientist. We'll see. I'm just looking up names. Um, let's say... Henry... So, Lilith, who's the scariest of the people that come on board. And don't forget, you can choose one of the open, uh, like, actual skilled positions if you wish. Ooh. Scariest person who comes aboard. Hmm. Now, is this someone that I can, like, just name out of the blue? Or yeah. should it be someone that's... Okay. Um, let's go with... Tobias Davenport. Nice. What's Tobias Davenport's job? I feel like Tobias Davenport is probably an officer, like someone who has some power, but like not, you know, ah, ultimate power. I've got the job for him, the bosun's mate. Perfect. Uh, among other things that the bosun's mate would do would be that uh, in the occasions where discipline would need to be handed out, it was the bosun's mate's job. Yep, that would be why Lilith is very afraid of this person. All righty. Mr. Burns, as first mate of this barky, um, who have you sailed with before? And how do you feel about them? I like the name. I sailed with Modesty Mun. M-U-N-N. -N. What, what job are they? Um, you can say you. just ordinary sailman or sailor or something. Yeah, I think I'll just say ordinary sailor. But she was damn good. Helped out in a pitch. And uh, didn't complain too much perfect in uh whistler's you know book okay um angus yes question because you actually knowing people is a little more complicated <laughs> sorry which was the oh uh who who have you who have you who do you know from before and how do you feel about that Okay, uh, I'm just going to take a quick peek at my backstory here. Oh. <laughs> All right, let's see. The person I killed was Dutch. So perhaps I know another Dutch person who was on board, much to my chagrin. Yeah, let's say I know Martin Eccles. E-K-K-E-L-S, who is, uh, I think, maybe uh, the Cooper? That's a skill that you could mm -hmm. have, huh? That you could have that doesn't necessarily involve boats, but brings you onto a boat. Yes. It's an important skill on a whaler, mm -hmm. for sure. Because, you know, they carry the oil in casks. Yeah, and I think Martin's family are friends of the family of the guy I killed. Not necessarily, like, super close. I, I don't think this is necessarily going to be something that's going to, like, explode immediately. 
but I think there's definitely some uh, tension when I learn that this person has also been hired for this voyage. All right, Cap. Um, so who's in love with somebody on the ship and why is it obvious? Oh, goodness. Um... Besides, you know, like Mr. and Mrs. Yardley. <laughs> well, well, they're married. married. <laughs> One would hope. They um... share a bunk. We all hear them. <laughs> Um, uh, using the Cthulhu Mythos name generator, um, Ian Faulkner. Um, who's, although it might be fun to have it be Henry Acker, the very well, new Henry, person. Henry could be in love with Ian Faulkner. I mean, you know. <laughs> I sure, know put, put Ian Faulkner down on one of those jobs. That's the sailmaker sound. Sure. Perfect. He's in love with Henry? Or is Henry in um, love with Henry's him? Henry's in love with him, I think. Or like, you know, hard schoolboy crush. And you know, because he's always hanging around him. Stay, can you can you teach me sort of thing? What's that? What are you doing? What does that mean? What's this called? Beautiful. Uh let's maybe do a few more of these. Just so that we all have... you should assume that a couple of King... Innsmouthers and Kingsporters who look like they're from that crowd are definitely on board the ship. How do you look like you're from the Innsmouth crowd? Well, the Innsmouth crowd, you know, they tend to have uh, rather pendulous uh, neck flaps and uh, receding, you know, bulging eyes. The King's Quarters are just clannish, like you can tell. Just it's like one of those things is like when you see a bunch of people who are all in the same family and it's not even just like their physical resemblance, it's like they all have the same quirks. It's like that. Um, so we I'm not gonna ask us to fill out the entire crew because we need plenty of names for when we gotta pull somebody out of the out of the drink or something. But speaking of those, um Lilith, who strikes you as the most mystic person besides Phoebe, if Phoebe gets on board? You are muted, I think. Yes, I was muted. Um, yes, definitely Phoebe, but probably also the captain, but I imagine the captain cannot be included either. I'm looking for NPCs. Indeed. Um, let's go with... Nicodemus Stanton. Ooh. That sounds like a blacksmith name to me. Yeah. It's like definitely a the, the Nicodemus Stanton is definitely a very quiet but like strong type. You know he knows things. Where is he from? Innsmouth, for sure. Definitely an Innsmouther. Probably knows the marshes. Yeah, probably Corey and him doing one of those like. Mm -hmm. You're like, mm. Eamon, what fight do you have to? What who who got into a fight that you had to break up while you were still rigging the ship, and who are they fighting? Simon Fulton. <sighs> he tried playing one of the cabin boys in a game of cards when they had a little bit of downtime cabin boy caught him cheating uh a row started and i basically gave simon a stern talking to in traditional sea fashion i.e a good you know whack to the head and a warning to not do that when we're out at sea especially to the cabin boy Sounds like he's a pretty young guy then. Yeah, he's a younger guy. He thought he could be slick. And it, it kind of like cemented his reputation as he thinks he's smarter and uh, more capable than he actually is. All righty. Uh, and I think the last... Uh, request. Do you mind swapping out that first name? Oh, sure. Uh, I had a character with the same name for a long time, and it's uh, it'll it'll throw me. 
Not a, uh, Duncan. Accepting our uh, motley crew, Angus. Who's the most unlikely person to be aboard this ship? Uh, I'm going to say our surgeon, um, Silence Milligan, uh, just by virtue of being a somewhat uh, staunchly religious woman uh, at a time when that would not necessarily be someone you would expect to become also a uh, skilled and uh, efficient surgeon who then would choose to pursue a uh, whaling p post of all things. Quick question. So if if Silence becomes the surgeon, is Phoebe going to like potentially share the job or does that Phoebe put Phoebe could as could be the away? surgeon's mate and it's a lot of surgeons to carry on board this ship, but it could be done. She's, She's also not disinfecting doing... bandages and things. So I think we're going to take our break shortly, but I do think maybe this is the moment where we need to settle this and come up with a plan. So Cap, Lilith. Love chat. Or do you want to do this as uh, you wanted to have a chat with her, right? Yeah, that's what that was going to be about. Okay. Yeah. Do you want a bigger scene out of this then, or just a... um, which whichever way? I think I think she's mostly. I mean, I think she'll come and find the captain. Have if Eamon has conveyed the captain's decision on the score of Phoebe. Uh, I think Lilith does not take no easily, uh, and so she's going to come and <laughs> really? make the captain uh, basically make the pitch to the captain herself. So I think she probably just knocks on your door, knowing, of course, having had tea in your quarters, mm -hmm. she knows where you live. Oh, uh, probably, probably up in the quarter deck, actually, like standing more or less exactly where he was when Eamon uh, made the pitch the first time. Um, I think then, getting no reply, she will head up to look for you um, and find you on the quarter deck. The yep, captain is up there. Did you just come on up? Yep, straight up. Captain, a word. You've had it. I hear tell uh, you do not wish to take aboard the young girl, Phoebe. Is she? I was under the impression she was uh, grown, at least. I think she uses young girl relatively. Okay. She's she's an adult then. I think so. Yes. As long as I'm not taking on a nine-year-old. Um, <laughs> that's what I told Eamon. Why? Back. Why do you think it's a good idea? Well, I told Eamon. Did Eamon not tell you? He said, you said, she said. There were prophecies involved. Yes, and if there are prophecies involved, you should have the prophesier close at hand, don't you think? In case there are more prophecies? Why do you need someone to tell you what to do? Ah, you see, the art of prophecy... It's often a misconception about prophecy that prophecy is a set of instructions. No, see, prophecy is an art. And it's about interpretation. It's about decision-making in circumstance. It's not about obeying a command. That is not what prophecy is about or for. It's a perspective. Would you deny that perspective on our ship? You ask that question like you already know the answer. Well, I do already know the answer, I suppose. After all, I know I've never been a prophesier myself, but I took a course or two in prophecy. Pause and then just let that slide. <laughs> I think that if you're going to do a thing, then you do it. I think you should act not in service of the words someone else has said, but because of what you believe out of faith. Well, I quite agree with you, actually, which is why I'm letting you know that Phoebe will be coming on this voyage as a courtesy and giving you a chance <laughs> to state your opinion. 
And he does actually smile just very widely. Oh, really? I don't know if I should be telling you this, but my plan, if you say no, is that I'm just going to stow her away anyway. I've read about stowaways. <laughs> so I think I know that, that that is real, right? I think that's how that works. I just, I sneak her on board. Do you know what will happen to her if you stow her on board? I haven't gotten that far yet. I just know that she could be a stowaway and then come along anyway. We will get several miles out to sea, and then I will take her up to the quarter deck and toss her over. You wouldn't do that to her. It's not her fault she's been stowed away. She's married to the sea. And to the land. Did you not hear the full story? She's the, the pin between the land and the sea. And if I were you, and we were out in open water, I'd want an anchor back to land. You know, just in case. And you get the feeling that Clement is not at all convinced by that, and that, like, the sea, the sea is where you should be. He put himself in a well yesterday. Um, but yeah, just still smiling. Says, you've told me what you will do, and I've told you what I will do. Do it. Well, she can come then, and you won't throw her overboard. Then we don't have to do with the stowaway business, if you say yes, of course. Since we already know how that would play out. I make your decision. Well, I'm going to bring her aboard. But I suppose she's not stowed away at that point because you know she's here. She can help the surgeon. Eamon said she had some sort of medicinal training or perhaps at least some awareness of medicinal skill. I'm not giving my permission. You do what you think you must and I'll do what I think I must. Uh, but we'll could I she's earn your months. permission? You no longer have my permission to be on this quarter deck. Get off. <laughs> and what if I don't? Uh, just like shout to the nearest several sailors. I can Nathaniel bounds up to the quarter deck. Like, Captain? Ms. Belvedere needs a little help getting down to the main deck. Would you please? I don't need any help. The captain was just considering. Like again, I... again to the person that I've called up now, if you would. <laughs> Aye, Captain. All right, now, come along, young miss. I feel like Lilith is, is like, I'm already gone. I'm already leaving of my own choice. No one is escorting me anywhere. And I think she looks back at the captain. She goes, think on it, captain. After all, you probably saw something in the well. Shall I put her on report, ma'am? What does that mean? Uh, she would be written up in the log and potentially liable for punishment. Oh, boy. Um, that won't be necessary. I keep I, the log, uh... though, so... <laughs> the that looks at you like, they had best learn fast. Today the captain's tied... Today the barky's tied up to the wharf, and the captain's in a good mood. Unless you wish a clout next time, I'd mind yourself. Mm, what's a clout? Uh, we, we'll take a rope tie a large knot in it and beat you with it. Oh, that does not sound well. Hey, it does not sound well. It would not go well with thee. Now away with thee. Thee has duties upon the ship. Go and fulfill them. Right, duties. Well, I have, I have a I have a surgeon's assistant to go and get. So if you'll excuse me. The night before you're to sail out, the ship uh, is floated out beyond the bar where it rests at anchor. So what that means is that basically you let the 
tide and whatever small amount of sail you put on carry the ship out until it crosses the sandbar at the mouth of the harbor and then it anchors out there that's the official sign that that this ship is going to be leaving soon uh that night captain um one of the boats comes rowing in and it's the boat that uh your third mate uses and it's manned by he's already picked his boat crew shockingly they're all king's mouthers or innsmouthers except for his harpooner which is uh uh oscar and uh oscar is not on not with him so it's just them and they're all wearing black ribbons on their hats and when he comes aboard he says uh captain a word if i may Is he? Yeah, they're they're on the boat at this point. Yeah, he's up on the ship now. Yeah. Oh, come down. What is it? I regret to inform you that my granduncle, Mr. Josiah Pembleton, suffered a sudden and unexpected stroke last night. Uh, I'm afraid, ma'am, he's dead. Sorry to hear it. You may find it somewhat strange, but having met my great uncle, I think you know, sir, that um, he was not one to allow anything to impede the tide of commerce. I've already made such rights as I must, as if my boat's crew. Well. Everyone goes down into the dark eventually. Said so like a true Jonoite, ma'am, uh, sir. And uh, he uh, sort of stands there awkwardly for a moment and says, well, I'll uh, be about my cabin now, ma sir. A stroke, you said? Yes, sir. He was rather old. Hmm. And I tell him whatever day it is that we'll be leaving for good. And I'll be ready. So Lilith, I'm not going to make you make any roll to bring Phoebe on board because, you know... <laughs> This is obviously going to happen. Kismet. We're collectively mm. committed. Yeah, it's just. Um, how do you convince? Well, uh, uh, no, I'm not even going to say how you convince her. I mean, she's kind of out of it most of the time. So just what is your plan, though, for how you're going to conceal this fact? <laughs> Get rid of the um, stuff in your one remaining trunk. Replace it with Phoebe. <laughs> oh my god. I love that, actually. Um, I think, yes, I think Lilith finds nooks and crannies elsewhere under, like, in the hold of the ship to store her belongings. Like, little, just, like, little, you know, like, a dress here, like, some pencils and just where they're unobtrusive, you know, where, that she'll have, like, caches um of like at various places um and i think that frees up the trunk um and so she uh will invite phoebe to reside in the trunk but also feel free to get out and stretch her legs because she shouldn't have to hide in the trunk the whole time just when the captain's around so um you're down in the hold uh with phoebe kind of hovering around you kind of still a little bit out of it worried uh, when you see uh, a bunch of the Innsmithers and uh, and Kingsport uh, clan or clansmen come down, uh, along with Elias Pembleton, the third officer, they're carrying several boxes, including one that's that's pretty long and narrow. Uh, along with, and the blacksmith is with them, and they're stowing this box away, and he's fixing it into the into the actual side of the ship. And Elias is like, fix it well, Brother Nicodemus. It's precious cargo. Ooh. Love that. 
do you do want to do anything or um <laughs> or are think... you are you much like your players yeah, just just silence? Like... <laughs> um, amazing um i think lilith is very curious about this um and lilith who can't keep her nose out of anything is going to go and ask what is that okay wow so there's this moment where everybody whips their head and looks at you and you have this uncanny feeling that there, it's like a bunch of the same person is staring at you and like that holds for a second and then elias kind of breaks in his awful in his you know gosh gee good shucks high, you know 1950s high schooler style <laughs> it's like ah um uh, uh, miss miss lilith uh we're just loading in some last supplies you know that uh the officers of the ship are encouraged to lay in their own personal supplies ah yes uh, I, I had not heard this about being at sea do ah. they, they they sleep in their own personal supplies no ma'am no there are boxes and such of wine and and such food is is perishable and palatable well, you know that I keep the ship's log, right? Should I not inspect the cargo so that I can make a note of what's in it? Well, ma'am, um, I am given an allotment of cargo and a weight, and I have scrupulously observed that both the space and weight allowed to me. So, uh, begging your pardon... But I don't see where it's any business of the either the ship or you. Well, the captain presumably wants to know about what belongings everyone is bringing on the ship. Right. And when if they, he would give me an itemized list, perhaps. When the captain himself comes and begs his officers to do that, then perhaps I shall explain myself to the captain, but not to you. Good day. I feel like Lilith has a retort, but probably already re probably already gone. Yeah, they all kind of file out. Nicodemus turns and just stares at you. He's just he's just holding that hammer he was using to nail in the rings into the to the side of the ship. And he turns and walks back up. I feel like Lilith just holds eye contact. Blinks. And smiles and walks away. <laughs> Um, cool. So, uh, the next morning, the blue flag is raised from the ship's main mist, which is the signal for everybody to come aboard for she will be making with the tide. Um, I feel like we should have Eamon in a scene, maybe with Angus. I'm not sure. Mm. I think I'm just uh, standing there checking the little last minute things, like tugging on ropes, making sure things are secure, kind of getting ready to go. It's the last minute checks, you know, and it, Angus is with me. I've been waiting for this young man. There's nothing quite as exciting as the first push out to sea, heading out on that voyage. You never know what you're going to quite encounter once you go over the horizon. It's a surprise every time. I love that feeling. I think Agus nods and he's like, uh, you know, I can... I can definitely feel the um, the anticipation. Oh, it's a, I... uh, it's much the same as starting out on a on a long hunt uh, at home. But he's just, he just he gestures a bit uh, more more. Oh, I with any luck there, Corey will turn you into a, a fine harpooner. You may even actually hit a a whale this time instead of some other kind of fish. Well, I, know. there wouldn't have been a whale in the harbor, I don't think. Oh, I'm just having some fun with you, man. I mean, come on. We're going whaling. It's adventure. It's work. 
You'll make some money. Have some stories to tell. Come on. You've lived by the sea your whole life. Give us a shanty, boy. Oh, I... Uh, give me a bit more time before I, before I tackle that one. It might be the hardest task I've taken on so far. Oh, well, if that's the hardest task, I'll have to find something a bit more challenging for you. If you'd like, I could strap you to the front. You could tell us which direction we're going. I don't think I need to be strapped to the front to manage that. Well, we can get rid of that plug ugly thing on the front of the masthead there. Not a, not a fan of the figurehead? Uh, I'm not a fan of figureheads in general. I mean, I don't mind you prettying up a boat, but I mean, what's the point in having a statue at the front of your boat? How how would you decorate the ship? I wouldn't. I don't know. Um, maybe... But you just said you don't. You're I mean, not opposed to prettying it up. I'm not opposed, but I don't know how to pretty anything up. I mean, look at me. Hey, dogs run from me when I sneak up on them on the street. I'm sure it's not quite as bad as all that. Oh, well. Thank you. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe a different shade of blue? I mean, if this were your bow, what would you do with it? He, uh, he pauses. He he reflects. Um, you can tell he's, like, giving the, con the, the question, like, fairly serious weight he uh, i think he's the kind of person who like anytime you ask him something he he gives it like due consideration rather than being flippant um and he's just like oh no carving the railings more might be nice oh there you go hey nothing wrong with that but trust me you got plenty of time to think about all sorts of things when you're out there on the the, the sea i mean we're gonna have plenty of time to be alone with our thoughts. I've, I've always enjoyed that. Very good. Although it seems it seems to me, it, with this many people in this small a place, you can hardly be uh, properly alone at all, really. I'm used to much more solitary uh, or not solitary, but small. Small you'd groups be, in, in big spaces. You'd be surprised when you uh, when you get out there, you know, on some of the late watches, or you're manning a few tasks by yourself. Or even when you're surrounded by a couple of people, you could be very much alone. Uh, I know some of uh, some sailors in the past who get, you know, awful homesick, and even when they're surrounded by everyone, they're a bit lonely. Uh, you know, wondering how family or their spouse back home are doing. Never really bothered me much. But for some, they have a hard time with it. They're the first ones off the boat whenever we make dock. Well, I think being alone is a skill you can master like any other. Oh, I, yeah. Uh, so long as you don't go crazy. I mean, I mean, and I've seen crazy. Do you hear about that woman back on land? Come walking down here in a fever, making prophecies there, is she? Poor lass doesn't have any family in the area. I mean, I feel bad for leaving her behind, but I mean, what are you going to do? We can't bring her on the ship. I mean, I've seen a few odd things since taking this job. Aye, so have I. Um, it's been uh, eventful, I think is the polite word to be using. Is that church service familiar to you? I'm not. No, no. I, I, I don't go into many. Uh, um, in, in the Catholic masses, they usually just talk in Latin and make me feel bad. Um, this was uh, a little different. Um, I think, and he just like leans over to you. I think they were Lutherans. I don't know much about the Lutherans, but I think that's, that's what they do. Um, I'll have to ask the captain. Um, I wasn't expecting him to take a header uh, straight into that well there, um, but uh, he seemed to be in brighter spirits after doing so, so I guess that's just part of what they do. Yeah, well, he said, he and I spoke about it, he said 
Now he said he has his beliefs. Um, they may uh, affect his choices on the ship, but I suppose they needn't the rest of us, or at least he didn't. I don't think I'm I'm to be expected to convert, which is all I'm asking, really. I I don't think the captain will have us convert to any of. Uh any kind of religion or beliefs that we may not already hold. Um, he's a, he seems a bit distracted now, but I I suspect that the captain, once we get on the open seas, is only going to have one thing on his mind. Wales. That's going to be the most important thing for all of us. Now you remember, you see any sign of whales, yell immediately, even in the dark of night. That's our bread and butter right there. I'll have to get used to being loud when I see my quarry rather than quiet, but uh, I'm sure I can. Oh, manage. I. Listen, no quiet men on this boat, all right? You yell, you shout, you curse. Fart a little if you need to. But make noise if you've seen the whales split your lungs. I'm sure I can manage that. Hi, right, good. Now, have you, uh, you seen that scientist around? You've got work to be doing. She needs some training up. Yeah, uh, he pulls a face, I think, like a brief face at the mention of Lilith. Uh, I'm sure she's around. Oh, I, she's probably in some kind of trouble or doing some kind of experiments with rope and my patients. Ready, a uh, little book. Yeah, yeah. She's always taking notes on everything. What do you need to have notes for and how the doors work? There's a door. Well, if I see her, I'll let you know that uh, that you've been looking. Hi, right, thank you, Angus. Now go. Look out at the horizon. Imagine what we're going to see. He nods until go and uh, lean on the lean on the deck rail, I suppose. So I imagine uh, shortly thereafter. Uh... With a nod from the captain, Nathaniel start, comes down and starts screaming orders. Four course and four top, main top and mizzen top. Lay upon those halyards and pull. Lay upon those sheets, lads. Look lively. And with that, the Calypso unfurls a tremendous amount of sail, possibly a little awkwardly. <laughs> and away you go into the wind. Um, away we go. So first to the Azores in a rather uneventful, if stormy, Atlantic passage. And then south towards the Cape Verdes, hoping to get through the doldrums to the coast of South America, which, believe it or not, that is the course you said to get to the Cape of Good Hope. <laughs> um, south of the Azores, uh, well, before, long before, but south of the Azores, there is actually a chance to find whales. And so the lookouts are all manned. Um, I've been thinking, Angus, I, that innate compass move could be very useful if you were looking for whales. It can indeed. Yeah. Do we wish to see how that goes one fine day when you're up on top of the foremast? Sure. It's really a bit of a dubious one for me because I don't have any uh, knack with beyond, but... We'll give it a go. God, there's so many buttons on this die roller is the thing. Uh, that is a, oh, I misread. That is a four. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um. I hope no one's relying on me primarily. No, they're not. Um, I think while well, you're staring up there, suddenly there's a shout from the main mast. There she blows! Flukes! Flukes! Um, and uh, as it is, you are late scrambling down. Um, and I wish to know which boat you would like to be in. Because... Technically, you would have been chosen, but you're a player character, so you get to choose. Yeah, so, I mean, I think it makes a certain amount of sense for me to be on the, you know, the uh, 
least prestigious boat, third mate, fourth, fourth okay. boat seer. Actually, then I'm going to put you uh, in the second mates because uh, Elias only carries Innsmouthers and Kingsporters. <laughs> except Oscar for Crane. Oscar. Yeah, but we don't know that story. So, <laughs> um, so you're uh, you're with Mr. Dana. Uh, yeah, so he comes scrambling and he's like, look alive, men, look alive. All right, let loose. And you plunge down into the water with the other boats already pulling away. And so you're probably like in the uh, bank closer to the first mate with um, Benoit. Uh, anyway, so Benoit is already singing a merry song about the cachalot as you guys are pulling away. Um, and in the back, so there's a long storied tradition of what the mate sitting in the back steering the boat would be. So picture this, you're in a little 30 foot clinker built uh, whale boat, you know, pointing at both ends uh, with the mate in the back with the, uh leaning on the tiller. Uh, everybody else is rowing with your back to wherever you're going. So only the mate can see and steer. Uh, there is several hundred fathoms of rope that are in a tub in the rear of the boat, but it's also wound around so that literally as you are rowing, you're jogging your hand up against the rope that's wound through the boat. Yeah. And when that, when the harpoon gets attached to the whale, that rope is going to come sizzling out. <laughs> from, so you know, be careful. Don't, don't let anything bad happen. Uh, and Mr. Dana's is just lying back like, pull, pull, gentlemen, pull. Why don't you pull? Break your damn backs, pull. Now easy, now easy. Now pull again, boys. Come on, lads. Come on, lads. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a pulling with a will. All right. So why don't you, um, why don't you uh, roll to uh, act under pressure here as you finally approach one of these whales? Cool. Uh, and that is a 10. Okay. Eight plus two for beyond. I mean, not get beyond, for balance. So you get near the whale, and Benoit lets fly. Uh, but at that moment, one of these, the second uh, oarsmen takes fright because the whale suddenly uh, splat slams its flukes down into the waters. He stands up. Benoit flips into the water. Um, and the, the uh, throw goes awry. And everyone's looking at you because without a thought, you've come, you've dashed up to the front of the boat immediately. You have the harpoon. All right. Um, because there's a second harpoon. There's always a second harpoon. Yeah, well, of course. You've got to have redundancy in your systems. Um, yeah, I suppose I was going to ask whether I was uh, dashing to, you know, rescue the, uh, the boat steerer or whether I was rushing to salvage things with well, the whale. Okay. But... Yeah, I'll back that up. It's your choice. There is a second harpoon. It's already attached to the line. And there's Benoit floundering in the water. And there's a great whale very close by. What would you like to do? You have a 10. So whatever you want to do, you're going to accomplish. Whew, this is one of them big character-defining moments. Uh, what I would like to do is take a brief moment to think on it is there any possibility of a dramatic cutaway to things that are happening with people elsewhere absolutely uh eamon why don't you act under pressure to approach one of these whales okay that is an 11. oh very good all right so you come alongside the whale uh quite expertly and mm -hmm. or stands up let's fly it's a solid hit so immediately the whale starts to run and uh, this was called a nantucket sleigh ride you are possibly moving faster than any human being in this part of the 19th century ever got to move because you you're moving at a 20 to 30 mile an hour clip on top of the water 
That's fast. I've done 30 yeah. on the yeah. water. It feels faster than you think it does. Now, now um, picture doing that in a in a clinker built whale boat where there's a half an inch of wood between you and you know the bottom of the ocean. <laughs> so here's what I'm thinking is this is where Eamon really comes alive. This is where like the old salt really just like comes up out of him. Like he's slapping guys on the shoulder, like, come on, man, come on, we gotta wear down the fish. You, all of you are stronger than the damnable thing. Get the let out. Come on. <laughs> so you're having them backwater furiously. Yep. <laughs> Come on, every man. One of you is that 20 worth of that thing. Come on now. All right. Um, yeah. Captain? So in. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Oh, go go yeah. back to you. Sure. Yeah, so in, in my boat, I've been, you know, I'm not. A particularly important person in this boat uh and i think angus strongly dislikes uh unnecessary death or injury um and so i think when benoit goes overboard i think his instinct is to uh go for him on the assumption that someone who is more experienced etc is going to be the person to pick up and deal with the harpoon situation i don't think he's got a lot of uh uh, I guess, ego in that kind of sense. All right. So uh, you spring into the water, snatch Benoit, and paddle back to the boat. Uh, at this point, um, uh, Mr. Dana has gone to the front, and he's tried to, th he's tried to throw the harpoon, but it fails, and the whale goes flukes up and sounds. And so you, Benoit flops into the deck. He's like, Mon Dieu, merci me, but... Uh, Monsieur Cachelot has uh, left us. El head disparu. What are we going to do? Presumably we'll have to find the next one. Yeah, Miss Dana is already sitting in the back of the boat. He just looks at you. <sighs> Mr. Valenson, that was 80 barrels of good spermaceti oil. Well, you saved a crewmate. It, it, it is to be admired. A highly skilled one. Aye, aye. My lads, let's wait to see if the beast comes back up. So and I'll uh, return to my station. I want to know if Lilith is in a boat. And if she is, is she, is, is she in the captain's boat? Because that would be the one that's left. Um, I Gosh. love that idea. Yep. <laughs> I think she also has brought her book with her into the boat and she's like writing dutifully like everything that's happening and like describing the way like the the blows sound and like how everybody is moving. She's like capturing all these details. And I think she's also sketching, but like Lilith is not a particularly good visual artist. She's great with words, but she's not particularly good with art. Um, so if you were to look at her book and her sketching, you would see some somewhat cartoonish looking uh, amateur drawings of like a whale and people going after a whale. So uh, traditionally the uh, oar closest to the stern of the whale boat was given to the weakest rower. Which means you're you basically you're looking at the captain as you row. Um, so you uh, being uh, skilled and lucky and many other things, Captain, uh, your boat had no trouble, and uh, Corey had no trouble uh, attaching to the whale. But after a short uh, pull, it sounded. Now, when a whale finish, when a whale comes back up, it will come back up and it always takes about 20 minutes or so. Mm -hmm. So you're just floating there with the cord trailing all the way down, taut as it can be. Corey is, who never, who, you know, some of the women on the ship have switched over to like duck trousers or something, but she's kind of like wearing a split equestrian skirt and just puffing on her pipe with her little hat pinned to her head, <laughs> standing next to the line. And then about, after about 20, 15, 20 minutes, she looks up and says, Captain to the front of the boat. She rises. Yeah, and like, what's like, does the water start changing or is, it, is she no. just measuring the time? She, 
you don't know how she knew. <laughs> Maybe she sent him to be out. Yeah. <laughs> but she comes clambering back and takes the tiller. And you come forward yeah. with the great lance. Yeah, and just like there's that that quiet moment, right? We're just like the sea and the sea and nothing but. I feel yeah. like, uh, unfortunately, Lilith has to interrupt this quiet moment um, because it's about to be profound. And then I think Lilith, uh, like, I think she's kind of like been ensconced in her writing and then she realizes suddenly that something has happened. And she's like, oh, is it happening? Is the whale coming back? To its doom, yes, hush girl, says Corey at the teller. <laughs> Lilith is wide-eyed and peering over the edge of the boat. So, Captain, um, this enormous beast uh, doesn't just come back up. It breaches. How far? Yeah, you you realize at the last second that what's happening, because all of a sudden the rope goes really slack. You're like, uh-oh. <laughs> it comes breaching out of the water, sailing up, slams with the boat and nearly swamps the boat then and there. In fact, I think probably you should maybe act under pressure here. For sure. <clears throat> I don't have any oars, but probably just like, like not even yelling, but just saying row. Where's my dice? Here we go. Act under pressure, you said? Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay. That is a six on the dice plus two is eight. Uh, worst outcome, hard bargain or ugly choice, please. I'm trying to think how to make, uh, okay. Um, I'll put it to you this way. Um, you can throw that lance, which will go a long way towards killing the whale. Uh, but somebody's going to get knocked out of the boat. That's fine. I'll throw the lance. Fantastic. Fantastic. So you don't even hear, you hear somebody scream behind you, but you don't care. You've tossed the lance, pulled it right back in. You're now up close enough to the whale that uh, you can actually stab and seek out its life. And uh, we don't have to get into the gory details. They are, in fact, fairly gory, but we don't need to get into them. And uh, with that, the whale is going to perish. Um, but who shall we toss out of this boat? Um, hey Lilith. <laughs> oh no! Would you like to act under pressure my, for me? This is part of my balance because yeah. um, I have none of that. Okay, we are just gonna flat roll it. And that's a six. Okay, that that that's that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, you're in the so water. You see the flukes come smash. You know, you were knocked when the boat nearly swamped. Uh, as the whale goes into its death struggle, it's slapping its flukes and wallowing around. And uh, with the boat moves off and um, they haven't had any chance to do anything. So you're just kind of floating now in this pod of whales. As the boat drifts away with the with the stricken whale. How much oh, excess nice. fabric do you have on? Lots. Uh, I'm definitely wearing a dress, and it is now getting heavier, I would expect, with being waterlogged. Um, Lilith's a fairly strong swimmer. I, she grew up near the ocean. She, you know, even when she lived in England, she is used to sea swimming. Um, so I think she's not instantaneously panicked. Um, in fact, I think she is a little calmer well she's definitely calmer than she should be um but she's a little calmer to have moved away from the dying whale i think that she's not really seen a lot of death before and like having the whale die in front of her was um 
more impactful than she thought it was going to be. Um, so now to be surrounded by live whales, I think she feels somewhat weirdly more at ease, but I think it's also starting to dawn on her that uh, she needs to get back to a boat or something that floats uh, relatively soon. Cool. So you're bobbing in the water and suddenly you see a dark form rising underneath you and an enormous sperm whale breaks the surface of the water. Now, its eyes can't see you because they're on the side of its head, but it feels like it's just staring at you. And like you can hear the weird clicks and groans coming from this great beast. Am I, I'm, am I, I'm within touch range of this whale? Yes. Like can I, can I pet him or her? You can sure try. I would love to try to pet a whale right now. I'm just trying to think what this, I, th I think for fun. Can I, hmm? well, I mean, that won't work once it goes back under, but I could try to ride the whale. <laughs> it's a way to stay afloat for a time here's my pitch to you you'll need to act under pressure here because there's a lot of things that can go wrong mm. but feel free to claim your plus one ongoing from your little prophecy yes I will take that that is and seven Oh, no, eight, because I have to add one. Okay. Seven on the deck. So you reach out and you touch it and feel it vibrating under your hand and the water goes strangely calm. And then all of a sudden you hear a shout and the whale suddenly dives beneath you and a boat comes closing in. <laughs> And you see Benoit at the front with Mr. Dana steering right behind it as the whale sounds down. And they're like, and one of them, Mr. Uh, Benoit sees you and extends an oar. It's like, ah, c'est joli. I have rescued. I've been rescued. I rescue. I feel like Lilith is, wait, does, does it look like someone in Benoit's boat is trying to stab the whale that's just gone down? Benoit has already thrown oh. a harpoon into it. Yeah, it is stabbed. I feel like Willis, like, no, I was just getting to know the whale. Eh bien, mon cher, you will know the whale from inside and out shortly. But I think at this point, she's also worried about her book, which I think she's like tried in vain to kind of keep above her head and not waterlogged at this time. Uh, so she does recognize that it is important to climb back aboard so that her boat and her are no longer uh, at risk of drowning. Uh, so she does get in the boat. So I guess uh, Lilith comes stumbling into the back of the boat. You're muted, Doreen. I'm also soaking wet here, so there's definitely. I feel like they look at each other and are like, you too? Yeah. We so, are all half not... drowned here, eh? <laughs> Certainly a damp start. Ah, we are only wet in water. Soon we will be wet in oil. You have to be careful not to smoke then. And he takes another puff on his pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Do you smoke, Miss Belvedere? I have never smoked myself, although my father did quite a bit. Can't say I do either. Well, we have that in common, then. How do you end up in the water? The captain... Well, the captain threw a harpoon. Lance and I fell aboard with the rocking of the effort. The motion. Fell overboard, I think. Yes, correct. Fell overboard. Well, it seems to be a occupational hazard glad you didn't uh glad you didn't sink angus you're a hunter have you ever gotten used to seeing things die 
everything dies and most things live off of that in one way or another it's a matter of knowing your place in that and making sure it doesn't happen needlessly but is it still hard even with after all your experience when it's wasteful. I suppose one could call this, or couldn't, depends on if you see the capture of oil to be worthwhile, worth the cost, I mean, worth the life taken. It does depend on that. And I don't think he goes into uh, further expansion on whether he feels it is worth that or not, because they are uh, surrounded by a bunch of people who are making their livelihood off this uh, very thing. But there may be a uh, a moment of rapport there. With that, um, you have managed to capture three whales, and they're brought back to the ship and uh, tried out and... We don't have to get into that. It takes several days, and uh, it is a, a astonishingly brutal and ugly business, but um, things get done, and you're Certainly well an on your way. an effective start to the voyage. Oh, yeah. You're all very happy. Um, a few days later, you're sailing through the Cape Verdes, and every now and then, small boats will sail out laden with local produce and things that people can buy from. Um. So, yeah. Yeah. I invite you to make some scenes as you approach the line. <laughs> we have another half an hour. So, uh, I, uh, I think Eamon's in a pretty good mood now that the, we had a good start to the voyage. I, uh, I think I'm going to have a conversation with Lilith. Yeah, I think like once she gets back aboard, uh, Lilith is for once like not particularly composed or well put together. Uh, she is in a waterlogged dress, completely drenched. Um, she looks like she is much more scattered than usual, um, and like she needs she like needs to go dry off at some point to like regain her Lilithness. Mm. I uh, Aidman is in. Very high spirits. It is just, you know, clicking his heels and on top of the world. And he's got a little bit of like salt spray on him and everything like that for him being in the boat. But other than that, he's he's doing just fine. Oh, hi there, doctor. It looks like you took a little bit of a swim. Kind of you to notice. Yes, I did fall into the ocean. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. Don't you worry about that. We all take a swim every now and then. That damnable fish knock us about, or your fellow oarsmen, or the waves, or damned birds. Eh, don't you be worrying there, Dr. Driftwood. You'll be just fine. I feel like she she notes all of these barbs, but knows that she utterly deserves them, and so, like, can't retort, um, which frustrates her all the more. And I think she says, it seems like you had quite a uh, good journey in your boat. Oh, hi, hi. That Thor there. Hell of an arm. Yes, everyone seemed to perform their jobs admirably. Oh, definitely. So, now tell me. We, we have a moment. It's going to take you a little while to dry off. How you feeling about all this? The, you... You got your first hands-on experience battling the fish. How'd you do? How you how you feeling? You feeling good and pumped? I gotta tell you, I do. Well, it was bracing to swim in the cold ocean water. Uh, I think actually more so than battling the fish, I swam with them. I can't say oh, really? I've ever swum with whales before. Oh, it was, it was incredible. You got until... lucky there. Well, until the whale that I was 
well, until it died. Mm, you seem a bit crestfallen. It could be hard the first couple of times you have to do this. You know, some of us, it's all glory and, and gold we're thinking about, but it, it's a pretty beast, you know? It's, it's hard to watch these things. It... It was alive, you know? Oh, hi, hi, yeah. It was breathing and swimming, and it was just such a majestic, massive creature. And it, it had a community. There were what? other whales, and... Well, it seemed like we intruded a bit. I mean... I mean, yeah. I mean, a man's place is really on the land, you know. It's living out by boat, going from here or there across the whole world. It's it's still a bit new, I guess. Um, but I mean, you know, we're we're hunters and gatherers. This is this is part of uh, what people do, you know. Um, you know, we don't eat the bloody thing, but we use it and people get to eat and have homes and whatnot because of it. So, I mean, and we're not out here doing it all for fun. Well, maybe he is. He's a bit crazy, but, you know, the rest of us are out here. This is a trade, you know, like do you feel bad when you go down to the tanners to get a new coat. You know, you came from cow. That cow's innocent. Started out as a wee baby calf and got fattened up, and now we have a new leather coat and a hamburger. I suppose when you put it that way, I think it's just so much easier to dissociate the end result. Or, you know, when I'm at home writing by the light of my lamp, I don't think about where that light comes from or what the cost of it is to receive. It, there can be a certain amount of distance that you get used to. You know, if you want, you don't have many duties coming up. Maybe you should spend a little time in the kitchen. You know, the you kitchen. get kind of... Well, the galley. Um, we have fish. We catch them live sometimes. Go down there and uh, clean them. You get used to having to deal with this kind of thing real quick, doing things like that. Take a live mm. fish, make it dead, cook it up and serve it. That would give well, me a lot of details for my book. I do need would. to be able to have more visceral imagery to, to draw upon. Yeah. I mean, I just think that, you know, just get used to killing some stuff and cooking it. Because that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. I suppose so. You're very wise in your ways, Whistler. I only know about three things. This is one of them. Well, you know you know quite a lot about it, and it may be a very foreign trade to me, but I can tell that many here are quite skilled at it. Oh, I, I just am not one of them yet. Die yet. But don't you worry. By the end of this voyage, we'll get you your own harpoon. Ah, I don't know if I've ever... It seems strange. I don't know if I could ever... Maybe. You know what? I will take this feeling, this this tension, this uncertainty about what I've witnessed, and I will write it into my book. It seems something that could produce a lot of dramatic tension and irony, you know. My character should maybe feel this, and, well, I certainly have a lot to go on. Hi. Hi. All right. Well, why don't you go get dried up there, Dr. Driftwood, and uh, so you don't catch your death? You can't. Call me that whenever you want now, no, just because I f fell in one time. Oh, I know. I'll call you that probably all the time now. It's it's a good nickname. How do you think I, I got my nickname? It's not Can you of my whistle? Darling. No. I just snore, and when I snore, it sounds like a little bit of a whistling sound. Everyone calls me Whistler ever since. Have you ever wanted to learn to whistle so that you can live up to your name? No. Well, perhaps I can teach you. I'm a very good whistler myself. Oh, well, uh, maybe. I'll teach you how to be a whaler. You teach me how to whistle. 
Uh, let's see who gets the job done first. You're on. And I think she uh, seems perked up. You have lifted her spirits successfully. Captain, a few nights yes. after you've finished trying out and are once again on your course towards past the Cape Verdes and now aiming, heading to South America, you wake up one night, moonlight streaming into your great cabin. Phoebe is, is standing above you wearing her wearing a long white dress and holding a carving knife. <laughs> Will you throw me overboard now, Captain Thorne? Yeah, I'm like reaching under my pillow for my knife. <laughs> Would it be a sacrifice? Should we not both throw ourselves over as bride and bridegroom? You're half promised as it is, aren't you? And like sitting up to face her, like not doing anything with the knife that I have and not really looking at hers either. I already have several times now. Sacrificed? Given over. What sort of hecatom would you make of this ship if you were asked to by them beneath? If he wants it, it's his. Oil burns most merrily upon the water, does it not, Captain Thorne? I hold out the hand that does not have the knife in it, like for her to take. It does. She takes, she grabs your hand with the hand that's not holding her knife. <laughs> but that's a terrible way to die and unsuited, I think. For this what shall we do then you and i captain i made the woman who made sure you were here a promise you promised her i promised them beneath who has the greater claim upon me what did you promise him him them I promised to be their omen. He'll stand up and like lead her by the hand out. Uh, who's on lookout currently, I wonder? Or is that not a thing now that we're out of whaling territory? Oh no, you, the ship always mans a lookout during the day. Uh, rather less at night, but there's always, an, there's always a watch serving above, so... Um, that's an excellent question. Uh, who wants to be on watch standing above? It could be. Yep. Okay, Eamon. So you're you're the officer of the watch. And it can theoretically be almost anybody because the ship is divided into two watches. I drew the short straw tonight. Yeah, I will take her up to the quarter deck. And like not to just just stand there for a bit like there's no <laughs> urgency here really um uh, Cap captain is that you what's there is phoebe with you yep i'm holding her hand <laughs> um and captain, like I, let I, it I, let it go as like we we stop walking do you know why you can't whistle mr burns do you know you're on a whaling vessel, Phoebe? Do, do you know why, Cap Mr. Burns? Uh, no. Drowned men can't whistle. I... Uh, Captain, thank you for... you drowned. Um... I, I... When we were on... We were on the Solano, I mean... I went under for a spell... I'm alive, though, so I don't feel like I've drowned, drowned. How did... What... Captain, did you... Miss Belvedere. She did what she, she said she would. So I'm going to do what I said I would do. You can um, go back. And I think I'd like to roll to persuade somebody. 
or manipulate another. Um, I would like you to go back to looking out <laughs> and not look here. And that's plus beauty. Oh, interesting. For NPCs, they ask you to promise something first, but you are not an NPC. No, I am not. My gosh, uh, that's a 10. <laughs> so if you if Eamon does it, he will get plus one forward. And uh, if you refuse, you'll be acting under pressure. Um, I don't know what kind of arrangement you made, but if you're telling me to, to just go back to my watch, um, I will, uh, all ship shape, um, I'll, I'll go aft. And I, um, I, I walk away. Yeah. Though I kind of, no, yeah, yeah, what's going say on? after, say after you just have faith, Whistler. Um, I Captain. The breeze dies down. It's very calm. All the wind comes out of the sails. And the ship has no way. And I lead her to the back of the quarter deck. And let go of her hand again there. What do you intend to do, Captain Thorne? That is her asking me. Mm -hmm. I think the question is what you intend to do if you don't give, they will take regardless, but the giving matters. She looks at you. Will you hold your promise higher than theirs? What did you, what? She had said that she promised them or they promised her. Six of one. Okay. <laughs> what promise was made before? I was to be their omen, their harbinger. Have you not already been? Well, it seems my work is not over yet. Then it will not be over. Miracles have a price, Captain. Then pay it. Gladly. So you're gonna... You're I, am, I am not pushing her over. I am waiting for her to jump. She looks at you. Oh, Captain. I'm held on this deck by my promise. If you are held by yours, then do what you are here to do. It is an honor, and I will push her. Cool. She goes tumbling over the side with a shriek, hits the water, which is now mirror calm, and stands up. <laughs> sort of looks down at the water, looks up, Giggles slightly. If you go around, I, I assume there's like, you know, like little little ladder mm -hmm. handholds in the in the ship. Yeah. We'll just say like to, to the left. <laughs> she walks over and swings up into what's called the chains, which are beams that project out of the side of the ship and are used to tie the stays that hold the masts in place. So she walks over to the mizzen chains and jumps up and grabs the cable and says, Captain, I riveted the land and the sea together, but that doesn't mean I can't still call upon them of the air. And there's a tremendous peal of thunder and a blinding white gale comes out of nowhere. I mean, like literally nowhere. Like one second the sea is calm, the next thing you're slammed so hard by this gale that the ship pitches over. And in this tumult of water and lightning and thunder, you can just barely hear Phoebe's cackling laugh as all hands are called immediately onto the deck. Eamon's probably shrieking and grabbing the tiller, grabbing the wheel. 
And well, gee, that seems like a good place to stop for that. Oh yes. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't I don't know what scene can follow that. Truly. My I have one question and I will put this to you, Sarah. Do mm. you think this is it's more interesting if Lilith witnessed that happen and either could not get there to act or chose to do nothing or that Lilith has no idea that that happened. Huh. I mean, I feel like knowing is always more interesting than not knowing. Okay. Generally, yeah. I'm going to go talk to the captain. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, what were you doing up at, you know, 2 a.m. or whatever? Writing your letter? Yeah. Uh, yes, writing my letter, yeah. Perfect. which I will doubts and then... have to, uh, yes, read at the top of next session, which would be about my doubts, because I missed. Uh, thank you all for a lovely session. Yeah, uh, looking that was forward charming. to the next. Anybody want to see me tie a bow on? <laughs> sure. We'll know what it looks like. So, when you talk about knots, it's the running end, this end, and this is the standing end. And you make a bite, which is a loop, so that the standing end is on top. Then the little rabbit goes in, and uh, I can't really around the stump, and back up through. There you go. And you can tell it's right because it's going to look like it's got a little lasso like that. And the back is going to have the this little triple knot. The bowline's advantage is that this is a loop that basically will not move. This knot will not loose. It takes a lot to loose a bowline. So when you need a loop that's actually absolutely stable, that's what you tie a bowline for. On a ship, what they would tie a uh, bowline for is when you try and sail close to the wind, it will try it, it will tend to blow the sails aback, as it's called, which means it'll blow back towards the mast. So you tie a bullion to a uh, loop or a head on the sail and pull it out so that it keeps the air flowing into the sail. And that way you can get pointed up closer to the wind. And therefore, they uh, call that sailing on a bullion. <laughs> It's spelled bowline, but it's pronounced bowline for reasons. And Wikipedia uh, tells me it is the king of the knots. It is. It is the first and simplest knot uh, most people get taught because it is a lot of knots come off of it. Like next week, I'll show you the sheet bend. It's a similar knot. I will do so. Is balance. Am I very balanced? Actually, yes, yes, I am. We almost all are. With one notable exception. Hey, at least I don't have negative balance. It's a curious thing. Most people didn't eat whale. It was apparently astonishingly rich. Yeah, I, I read that an article a while back in like the New Yorker or something about some guy who went up to Alaska and like ate a whale. <laughs> It's got a very interesting taste, according yeah. to them. It's extremely uh, fatty, as you might imagine, as it is. Yeah, but you just like, like take it and just yeah. eat it raw. Worst Lauren Bacall reference ever. <laughs> um, so, when everyone stares at you wondering what happens next, huh? Okay. So, uh, that was fun. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, things get weirder once you get it out of the port, and they were already plenty weird. So, hey, I was um, not expecting her to just stand back up on the water. I love like, that, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs>